Hi everybody, welcome to part four. Um, I'd just like to say my usual thank yous to everyone and particularly those people who've subscribed. Um, once we can get subscriptions up to a thousand, I can get a, a community page, which I'm not entitled to beforehand. Then we can start interacting, we can start uh, talking to each other one-to-one -one, uh, and also talk about what you want me to do next and that would be fantastic. But next, part four. Let's have some fun. Let's do a balance together. Put it all back together as it's going to be in the final assembly. Uh, you get to hold it in your hands uh, and it helps you make good decisions about the direction you're going. It's a great thing to do. So let's just plonk on the scratch plate. Yeah, and pop the bridge and pick up in position. Well, that's really got me thinking about the colour already and what, what sort of finish I want to do on the neck. I think I'm going to stick with as, as close as I can get to a vintage sort of look. Um, but one of the things I obviously have to do, probably next, is sort out this nut that broke. I'm an absolute magpie for bits. I mean, I buy necks, I buy all sorts of things, even whole guitar sometimes, just for bits. Um, but I buy a lot of Chinese bits. Don't laugh, they're great. I mean, everything's made in China. Um, so I've got drawers full of knobs. I've got uh, string ferrules, I've got uh, switches, machine heads, all sorts of things that I've bought over the years and I just keep them all and I buy them in, in, in bulk and I buy them, you know, sort of five at a time because you always run out. So when I start a build, I'm actually confident that I've got all the bits. So over here, I've got a drawer full of nuts. There you go. You could say it's chock full of nuts. These I bought a little batch of and they just feel very authentic to me. I don't know if Fender used bone nuts, but they sound great. So we need to try this in our neck. And of course it doesn't fit. So we need to make that smaller. And the way to do that is a sandpaper block. Now because it's bone, it'll go down really quickly. And then once it just fits nice and tight, we stop. It should actually be held in place just mostly by the string pressure. Let's just pop that in. There we go. So that now fits in there really nicely. It's right in the bottom, I hope, of the slot. Yes, it is. And it's the right way round. Yep, another one we can tick off. Another job done. So one of the great things about doing a balance together is you get an idea of where things need to be and at some point we're going to have to fix this bridge in its final position so we can actually drill the holes through the body for the strings. This is a 25 and a half inch uh, piece of plastic which I have made. Just touch that on the inside of the nut. The bridge saddles will have to be wound back but that's I can move the bridge backwards and forwards a little bit. Now where, where it actually sits on that centre line and I'm centering on the screw for the centre saddle where it sits on that centre line is largely aesthetic. I could have it quite close or I could have it further back. I think further forward, I think I can cover up those holes just. This screw is in the middle. That's sitting nicely. This is parallel. So now I'm happy with the look of the layout of the guitar and I'm sure that the bridge is in the absolutely the correct position and it's smack down the middle. I'm going to mark up the holes to screw the bridge onto the body with. Okay. So, let's get in there and drill the first hole. Let's stick the bridge back in. And the bridge is fixed. So there we go, the bridge is on. So the next thing we need to do is to drill the holes for the strings that go all the way through the body. They've got to go through absolutely straight and appear on the other side of the guitar in exactly the right place where we'll put ferrules on. Sounds easy, doesn't it? It isn't. This is perfectly solid now, so we can just go absolutely crazy and mark those up, absolutely. Complete with a little divot in the middle, which I know to be the center, I think. And we're marked up. So drilling these holes all the way through the body can be a bit of a nightmare. And I've seen people all over the internet do it different ways. And I've seen lots and lots of Telecaster projects where they appear on the other side of the guitar all over the place. And it's actually a look that you can never recover from. It, it just looks awful 
from then on. Now, hopefully these will already be drilled in your body, but if you do end up drilling them, this is my method. It's not the best method, it's not the only method, there are thousands of others, but this is the only way that I've ever had any real success at it. Stick with me. So I'm just going to centre punch my holes, because I want the drill to go exactly in the middle of these holes. In guitar factories, I know that they have sort of pillar drills with like six heads on. I have a pillar drill, but the throat of it's not deep enough to put the guitar under. Um, so I use this. And what it is, it's a mains powered electric drill in a, in a jig thing that allows me to go up and down in a straight line. And this sits on top of the guitar. I align it over the top of my uh, marked up holes and then drill, moving it up and down as I go. And then hopefully it'll appear on the other side dead straight. Um, I use a 4.5 millimeter bit. I don't know what that is in American, but it's relatively thick, but you need a thick drill, otherwise it will wander all over the place and you won't get a straight hole. So, we're drilled. We've got our holes all the way through the body and they appeared on the other side. And they're not bad, they're not bad. Now, if they'd been perfect, I'd be really, really happy, but this is the real world. They're not perfect. There is a slight wibbly-ness uh, to the line. It's not absolutely straight. Um, it's perfect on this side, but we're never going to see this side. It's under the bridge. It's a shame, but there is a save that we can do here, and this is my, my little trick. The way we can make it perfect is with another template. If we position that template over the top, we can now drill the holes for this side of the guitar that the ferrules go into in exactly the right place. So they'll look great, even though the connecting holes may not be perfect. So that's my depth stop on there. Uh, I always go backwards with the drill. When I'm trying to drill critically, I will go backwards first, and then forwards very gently. the ferrule holes on the back of the guitar and they go all the way through to the bridge. I know it's a compromise, I know that in there there is a built-in error inside but it's a hidden error and I'm happy with that. We've got relatively few jobs to do now uh, but certainly one of the things we've got to do at some point is put the machine heads uh, in the headstock which should be child's play. Let's see if this one goes in. Yeah, I mean these are vintage Clouson style ones with the split in the top. And I think they're sort of age appropriate for this type of guitar. So they've gone in. In my experience, this rarely goes to plan because they generally don't fit next to each other. The, the holes in the top of the headstock are not generally the right distance apart so that these things just fall into place once you've got the ferrules in. If you don't put these in first, you end up with the, uh, the tuners like you at an angle to the, to the actual back of the headstock. So put the ferrules in first before you fit the tuners. Yep, every single time. There just seems to always be one or two. It's just they're just slightly too close together. And unless you get the absolutely perfectly drilled headstock, or you've drilled it yourself perfectly, of course, um, then just there's always one that seems to not fit in. So you end up taking a little bit off all of them or some of them or and just jigging it around so they all fit in. That seems to fit together much nicer, actually. I guess if you just need to take a little tiny bit off, you can hold it in your hand and do that, and maybe just get the burrs off. It might just be a little bit of manufacturing burr that's pushing them all apart a little tiny bit. But uh, the best thing is probably to just pop them in a vice of some description. Last one. Will it 
would it go? Not quite, not quite. Oh yeah, oh hang on. Now we're going in. If I just yeah, if I just push them down and wiggle them about a bit. Yes, yeah, so I can make this work. They're tight enough. That was just a tiny bit off of each one, just to bring them all closer together. It wasn't one that was wrong. It was literally just a cumulative error of the uh, dimensions. Amazing, we're in. So now we've just got to drill some little holes to take the screws where the little holes are between each uh, tuner. Tiny but obvious tip. Before you go guessing the right drill bit for the screws that you've got, and they're all different, so I can't even advise you, get a sm the smallest one you've got, and then just drill it into a bit of bit of scrap wood just to make sure that it's just slightly too small for your needs but we'll take it yeah that that actually fits in there um, and I'm sure that when I screw that in that'll be nice and tight if it's too tight just do it out a little bit more with a half millimeter bigger but just test it on a bit of scrap wood first don't test anything in your neck and the other thing of course is set a depth uh, stop on your drill bit so that you don't go too far. You do not want to drill through the neck uh, headstock, it's such a depressing thing to do. Ask me how I know. Okay, let's put some screws in. Looking great. I mean, I just love the look of classic uh, Cloussons in a Telecaster neck. I, j I don't know what it is, the ones with the little holes through and the big chunky things with lockers on the back and things like that. I don't know, it just looks wrong to me. This to me is the classic Telecaster Clouson neck. Um, once this is all died up, it'll just look absolutely a million dollars. Okay, very little to do now. All we need to do is get that front pickup in the body. <laughs> and of course, straight away, these don't fit. So, out with the trusty drill. Film a four millimeter drill in my case. Probably could be quite different in yours, so check it. Just make those holes big enough for the screw to slip through because the uh, pickup has to uh, go up and down and you don't want it catching on it. So. Let's give that a go. So obviously we're going to need to feed those wires through. There, get them out of the way. Okay. If you don't feed the wires through, of course, you'll never get this to work because the wires will be impossible to feed through once you've got the uh, pickup it's positioned. So there we go. And let's see if we can get that in there. One swift move. Yes, there we go. Want to get that absolutely plumb center and pull the wires through. Good. Of course, that didn't go exactly to plan because I can't get the screws into the hole. The holes in the body are very, very small. They're really just marks, I think. So I need to make them a bit bigger. I've got a two mil bit. And I'm just going to widen them out a bit so that when I'm putting the pickup into place, I can wander the screws around and get them into the holes easier. That'll do. Yeah, so they look like a better target now. Pull that through, locate that one, that seems good. And hopefully that one will go in. A yes, 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 yes. Perfect. So on with the scratch plate, we need to know that it's going to fit in the right place horizontally, it's not going to push this pit guard around. We seem to have got lucky. That's actually fitting quite nice. And once the neck is on, yep, that does the business. So I think all of our parts are in place now. We've got pretty much everything fitted on the guitar. So I think what we should do is just put everything together and just make absolutely sure that everything's absolutely as we want it before we start sanding down, filling, and then uh, sealing, ready for painting. And there it is, all put together. Our wonderful guitar a guitar that we have shaped, a guitar that we have made our own, one that we've reprofiled the neck on. We've made sure all the parts fit absolutely uh, as they should do. We've drilled new holes where appropriate. We've made it our own. So that's the end of this part 
I look forward to seeing you all in the final part when we we'll get some finish on. Um, we'll maybe do a little bit of relicking, we'll be tarnishing some parts, obviously wiring it up and getting this guitar going and set up. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Keep building. That was part four. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time.